In this video, I'm going to explain the fundamentals of getting started with Thrustmaster's target software. It's only going to be a fundamentals video. I'm going to skip over all the advanced stuff and even a lot of the core configuration type stuff. That'll come in later videos. For this one, I just want to get you off the ground running with it. So first thing we need to do, go to their website, click on support. You can click download or just support. Either way, it's going to redirect you to their technical support website. From there you can click joysticks and click on just about any joystick and you should see a link to download the target software under the software tab. This is what you're looking for. When you install this, it's going to install the target GUI software as well as a target script editor. We're not even going to talk about the script editor in this video. It's way beyond the scope of this video and we're only going to worry about the target GUI. So launch that and you should see this. It'll show you every Thrustmaster device you have connected, <coughs> as well as all of your existing configurations. I'm assuming you don't have any, so we want to click on New Configuration, name it whatever you want based on whatever game you're trying to make a configuration for. Then you get the choice between Basic or Advanced Configuration. Right now we're only going to do Basic. Then the file location just dictates where the configuration is going to be placed on your computer. So click OK and then we'll be redirected to a screen where we get to choose what devices we want to include on in our profile. You can It's worth noting that you can include devices that you don't have connected, which is great if you just don't have them connect, connected or maybe you haven't bought them yet and you plan to. You can still go ahead and make a profile that includes that device. Also worth noting, although it should be obvious, that you can only use Thrustmaster equipment in these profiles. So having said all that, we're going to make a basic profile that includes a joystick and a throttle. Now, the next screen will be your Axis Overview. You'll see every device that you chose to connect in this profile, every Axis that device has, as well as every setting that Axis currently is set to. In other words, this screen here is how your computer sees these joysticks. The way this is set up right now is a total mess, especially from the perspective of older games. Most new games will be able to decipher this and figure out what you're trying to do here, but older games will very likely get confused by it. You'll run into problems, you'll have to troubleshoot things or reconfigure things. So we can skip all that right now by just cleaning this up a bit. So whatever stick you're using right off the bat, we want to set to the most basic axis possible. Direct X, X, Y, and Z. So we set that up there. And then the next step is going to be to remove anything we're not using. Just set it to nothing at all. That's also, this is a really good example of it here because my throttle has a dual throttle on it and I only want to use one throttle in Star Wars Galaxies. I could leave them both set up and only set this one to be my throttle in Star Wars Galaxies and tell it to ignore this one, but I'm much more likely to run into problems if I do that where I could just tell it, disable it, and then it sends no input at all and it's much simpler. Um, disable mouse inputs if you're not going to use those and it's also going to work better if you set the direct axis to the dedicated throttle axis. It'll work either way but this way when you set it up like this cleaner, simpler, especially with older games they're going to be, you're going to decrease the chances of running into problems and having to configure things, troubleshoot things and you're going to increase the chances of it working right out of the box without you having to troubleshoot or configure anything. So once you have your axis set up click on next then we'll be at the screen where we customize all of our buttons and any kind of profile configurations happen here so starting on this screen we'll see whatever device we currently have selected a 3D model of it you can change it with this awkward little slider here roll it around however you want to see it if you hit pan it'll rotate the device you can click zoom in it'll zoom in zoom out you can click list and it'll list every single button on that device or you can just click on the button which we're going to do now now if you don't change anything everything keeps its default configurations so you only need to change things that you want to be different from the base configurations now let's say that I want this button to press the W key instead of what it does by default the first thing I want to do is choose an event name this doesn't determine this doesn't determine anything from a technical perspective this is only for you to personally look at. This is like a comment and programming or something. But it is good to stay organized and give it a name you're going to understand later on. Now you can either just press the key on your keyboard to have it do that, or you can open up this virtual game interface. 
you're going to see a keyboard, a mouse, as well as a virtual DirectX controller here. Also worth noting is that you can change all of your throttle LEDs or other LEDs if you have a device that has those and the intensity. I'll get more in depth in that in a, more, in a later video. I'm just pointing it out right now. So we have it set to press W <coughs> and we want to leave it on pulse. There are other things you can do, but I'm going to save all this other stuff for the more advanced videos. So we're going to click add event. Now if this event is here, once this button is pressed, it's going to press the W key instead of its base configuration. The other thing I'm going to show you how to do is add two events. It's the same concept, you just do it twice. So if we're doing it here, we click on whatever button we want and click save key command. Add event. Now change it to do another thing and add event. Now whenever I press this button, it's going to do both of those events. And you can make macros, you can chain things, do sequences, there's all kinds of things you can do with this, but like I said, I'll explain that in a later video. This, what I've shown you, is everything you need to know to get started and make a really simple configuration for just about any game. Only things you need to know before you start is to click on save, because I don't think it saves by default, and then make sure you run your configuration. This configuration has to be running or everything you just did isn't going to be applied to it. Once this says done, you're ready to go. We're going to skip over the device analyzer for this video. The event tester is just a basic keyboard and mouse event analyzer since you started running this configuration. So anything you I do on a keyboard or mouse, as well as this joystick that I set to the red button that I set to press W is working. The other button that I set to press 1 and 2 is working. Every time I press it, it presses the 1 key and the 2 key and releases it. Works just as intended. And then the most important thing to know is down here, if you're running an older game, ignore these two MFDs and look right here. This is what you want to see. Thrustmaster Virtual Game Controller. This is what allows all your devices to work on an older game. You can have 10 different devices connected from 10 different lineups. <coughs> Whatever you put in this configuration is going to output as one virtual controller. So your computer is going to see this as one controller and then your game is going to see it as one controller and that's what allows it to work. Then you can click on properties if you want to and make sure everything is working. You should be seeing your input says you however you programmed it to. Aside from that, that's all you really need to know to get off the ground running. In later videos I'll go over more advanced stuff, but this will get you everything you know to start a basic profile with Target.